Hello and welcome to a midweek Wardy's Waffle. Another farm update. It's Wednesday, uh, Wednesday lunchtime. We've got a lot of sun at the moment, which is great. We might get combining later, but there's some showers forecast, so we'll see. Anyway, hope you enjoyed last night's uh, video I put up talking to Andrew Todd, the Australian farmer I met at the weekend. Some really good comments from you all. You enjoyed that, so that's great. Um, I'll see if I can get some more like that going forward because uh, it's great to hear farming's um, what farming's doing the other side of the world and viewpoints on different types of agriculture because clearly they've got far different regulations than we have and I think really they've got a supportive government. But anyway, um, we won't get on about that because you know I can go on for England about that. Uh, this update, we'll start off by looking at sugar beet. You can see here, I'm in one of our crops of sugar beet. This is on the heavier soil, so uh, this is sort of a bit higher clay and sand, uh, silt content than what we've got on the other land. I'm going to dig some roots up in a minute and just compare them uh, to, uh, to the light land up on the heath. Just regarding sugar beet, we haven't done much about this crop the last few weeks. Uh, British Sugar have just announced a, a bonus for lifting early and if we harvest beet between I think it's the 4th and the 11th of September which is exceptionally early they'll pay us an extra £4 per tonne on top of the contract price uh, in that period and then that drops 20 pence uh, per day through to the end of September so at the very end of September we're getting 20 pence per tonne on top of the contract price that we're growing for this year which is £40 a tonne. This is just a screenshot of, of, uh, of the table. Um, you can just see, if you want to freeze this, you'll see the, the pay or the extra money we could get on delivery. But my dilemma is, you know this crop wasn't harvested until May the, sorry, planted until May the 4th, May the 5th. It does look really well considering it was planted then. I think some of that is down to the uh, Vardastat Tempo direct drill we had in here. It hit moisture straight away and we got four millimetres literally the night we planted this crop. So it's exceptionally late to go in the ground um, we then tractor hoed it uh, or interro cultivated it call it what you like that helps the crop a lot it re-energizes the nitrogen and um, it uh, just puts a bit of air and and uh, freshens the beat up air into the soil so that helped a lot but we're going to dig some roots up in a minute just to compare where we are um, so I'll do that, but just to carry on uh, in this update, what we've also got, we're going to look at the other crops. We've round up off or glyphosated off some barley, uh, some oats and some beans. We'll take a look at that, just see where they are. It's definitely made a, a big difference. And um, also we've had a Manitou come on demonstration. Uh, Manitou wanted us to try the new 1041 model ours is a 941 as you know uh, or some of you might know so we're trying that one so a bit bigger machine but the same reach possibly it says 10 meters but i don't think it'll have much more reach so we'll look at that as well uh, and have just a few general snippets around the farm anyway let me start in this uh, sugar beet and we'll dig a few roots thanks very much for watching hope you enjoy this update and hopefully we'll see you at the end a bit more moisture lower down Right, let's just see what we end up with. I'm prizing the... Let's just see, it snapped it off. I don't know whether that's fangy or what sort of route we're going to be getting. Yeah, that's not brilliant. You can see here, Nala, come out, Nala. We can see the fangs there. It, oh, the fork's just gone in the side there, but um, and it's just broken that there. You can see it weeping, but quite a decent sized route. When you look at your hand, yes, <laughs> um, quite a decent sized root there, but you can see the soil is, is, um, is sticky. Nala, <laughs> she obviously hasn't forgotten the sugar beet time last year. She loves chewing these, but a little bit fangy. Should we have one central tap root? But we'll take that up to the heath and we'll just see what that's like compared to sugar beet on the light land. Or rather, Nala might take it up there. So there we are. The root on the right was the bit fangy one that Nala had. That's since found and the one on the left was one I've just dug and that's a lot better shape that is and a lot bigger. So we'll compare these up to the heath and see where we are. See the cultivations here going well. Not particularly uh, difficult field this. It's come up quite lumpy. Remember this headland was wet. It's where the winter, winter wheat and nitrogen trials were. It was quite wet when it was done. That's why there wasn't a lot of crop on this headland, but decent soil this. So all we'll do with this is leave it. It will green up. We'll glyphosate it. We'll spray it with glyphosate or Roundup, whichever you know it has, once or twice before drilling it with wheat yet again. And that'll be six years continuous wheat. This field, the field over the hedge there, 
then the field just through there as well this side the green near the trees will do that so that's three fields here continuous wheat and they won't be planted till probably october the 10th maybe a bit later so i've just come to the heath onto the light land got a field of beet here that's 57 acres you can see good big nice square field but the crop's looking really good i'm pleased with this so we'll just uh, dig a root out here and see what we can what we can end up with oh the fork goes in a lot easier here there we go that's loosened that let's see what that's like yeah a bit fangy get the soil up you can see the soil's a lot lighter a lot easier a lot sandier a little bit fangy but not too bad we'll just dig one more so to compare two of them yes nala that's sugar no nope, don't chew that so pick another one here at random just see what this is like well that's coming out first time there we go little bit fangy again soil's quite dry but you can see the light soil you can see total different soil texture here so these are the four beet now i've got the two on the left are from the light land that i've just uh, dug see the different soil there a lot lighter sort of reddy brown soil and then this is the heavier land you can just see the difference in soil texture there when you look at the color of it but so that and that is about the same size and then i suppose you'd say that that and that is about the same size light land light land heavy heavy so now a little bit of background to this this particular field here was the very first field we planted a sugar beet it was done on april the 9th i think it was still late we couldn't get on even on these sandy soil when we'd normally like to in the sort of third week of march second week of march to get the beet in but still earlier than the heavy land now normally this land up here would not have as good a beet as it's got now and it would need leaving until right into the winter to put its maximum weight on sugar beet grows an awful lot in the second half of september and um, october and the first half of november and the dilemma we've got is the heavy land beet we need to get wheat in after it it needs leaving in the ground really to grow a bit more and that's this one so even though it's not a bad size it needs leaving in the ground to grow a bit more really but the problem we've got is if we leave it too late and the winter comes in and the weather come breaks us or the weather comes early in end of october november we'll struggle getting this beet out the ground damage the soil and then we'll struggle to get the following wheat crop in which means then the next harvest the wheat crop will be affected as well so it's always a trade-off with how late dare we leave the heavy land to lift it so we can enable us to get the the following winter wheat crop in so it's a bit of a trade-off but because this land with two fields up here a 30 acre field and a 57 acre field of sugar beet we might yet i'll leave it until the last minute to decide we might lift the 30 acre field on the light land first um, because that was drilled nearly a month earlier than the heavy land and uh, and then see where we are but a um, bit of a um, dilemma at the minute where we go but this weather we've been having this summer has really, really helped the sugar beet crop because last year it suffered when it was so dry and so hot. Um, the one thing that might have suffered a bit is sugar because we do require the sun to give us high sugar content. And high sugar is what translates into yield because it's sugar we get uh, paid on. And um, so it's one of those things that we don't know until we get harvesting the crop where we're going to be. British Sugar do do test digs. And we haven't been selected this year. The fields are selecting at random. And we haven't been selected this year to do that. So I'm not quite sure where the sugar content is. But I think it will be lower because we haven't had so much sunshine. But hopefully the trade-off will be that the rain will have increased the root weight. So therefore we'll have more tonnes per acre of the root, even if the sugar content itself is slightly lower. Anyway, bit of a story about the sugar beet. A bit of information about what we do because uh, sugar beet as an air I think is dropping uh, quite a bit across the country because of its variable yield and uh, and the price that we get paid for it but at the minute this coming year we're on 40 pounds a ton which which will be good and if we can just get some more right weather to increase these sugars I think it will be a decent crop this year just looking at the field of oats behind me this was uh, done with glyphosate about 10 days now definitely made a big difference a bit thin when you look down into it from above you can see there's there isn't the green straw that there was so 
made a big difference. We just need some sun to harvest this. So when we get into here, I'm not quite sure when that will be because we've got a bit of rain forecast um, tomorrow, but we'll see. Uh, this is Wednesday evening at the minute, but we'll see where we are and uh, see if we can get some of this crop uh, combined because we need to get some of these spring crops in the shed. One of our local case and uh, Manitou dealers that we've dealt with and getting the um, forklift from have brought us a Manitou demo machine to try. And this is the only one in the UK at the minute. You can see here, it's the Manitou uh, UK demonstrator. It is a 10 meter, 10 meter, 4.1 or four ton lift to 10 meters um, height and reach. It's got 145 horsepower engine. It's not um, a hydrostatic or a vario transmission. It's power shift. I'm not quite sure what the L bit here stands for, but we're gonna try and compare it to our um, 941 and just see the reach and things so we'll just see what it's like so we've got our nine meter which we know is more than nine we're going to see what the difference is but we know that 10 isn't 10 so we'll just see get the wheels the same yeah that'll do is that fully out yeah. <laughs> we need to just tip the carriage back on ours so it's the same Pull it, crowd that right back. If anything, ours has more reach. If you look at the line on the concrete, compared to... When you look at the boom, I think it's an absolutely identical boom to ours. When you look there, and then we look at ours, I'll just go underneath and try not to get covered in oil. There we go. I just think it's the identical boom. Now, our chassis is shorter. You can see we've put the wheels together, but when you look at the back of it, definitely you can see how ours is, is shorter. And that's where they get the reach from. So I think the length of the reach, when it says it's a nine or a 10 meter boom, comes from this pivot point here. You can see there's the boom that goes right to the front compared uh, to there and it is a longer machine. I don't like this pickup hitch stuck right out at the back. It just looks like it's an afterthought compared to ours that's that sort of built in a lot smoother lines. Um, what else have we got here? It's a lot higher machine, this one is. You can see here when you look at the, in fact, I'll just turn the camera around. So you can see here the top of the bonnet underneath the air cleaner here, air filter. It's about level with the top of my head. Yes, I know I'm only uh, knee high to a grasshopper but we will stand alongside this one and you'll see the difference here it's only just above my shoulder height so you can see there's a big difference here um, of, uh, of height of the machine so just to look around it a bit more longer is to see between the wheels the wheelbase is longer got more work lights on it nice light here ours has this camera on to looking down the side of the machine another work light there all those mirrors um, folding lights now which is handy because I did damage our lights you can see that's my fault I caught it on our new contract tipper trailer which is there in the dark a week last Thursday night anyway we won't mention that anymore um yeah good lights on here lights around there so it's identical to ours really nice I love this Manitou feature that the cab floor is cut out. Hello, Nala. Yeah, so when you want to get out, it's a lot easier finding the step. A lot of forklifts are straight across there and it's really difficult to put your foot on the step. Cab virtually identical to ours. New gauge, another gauge on there. A lot more room behind the cab, behind the seat rather, because of the extra room there is in here. Good cup holder. Room there to put a small dog or a bag, your lunch bag. But otherwise it's more or less identical. But I do like our cab, I must say it's really good. Um, Really good visibility, curved screen all the way down. Got wiper on the side window there, ours has got that. Wipers on the top. So yeah, really, it's an identical. We'll just um, start up, put it into neutral. So that's your forward and reverse. There you can hear it bleeping. So that's neutral, that's reverse, that's forward. And that's your joystick for up and down of your boom. So we'll just start it there we go electric window same as ours which is great a lot better than having a split door the quite often i see forklifts with split doors the top doors damaged 
so it had electric windows much better so the boom is really good joystick on here Sim same as ours as I say you just lift, pull it back and that lifts the boom up and forward lifts the boom down very very quick response on the hydraulics I've noticed instantly and then um, pull it back that's on the roller there you can just see there and that pulls the boom in you can see the rain on the windows now which is a real shame um you can just see as well we've got great visibility here. that's what we like about our money too um it's the visibility out over the side here is fantastic the boom drops right down low in fact it's probably better here than ours ours is really good we can see right behind you so it's really good visibility on these fantastic the rain is not fantastic uh, that's about jiggered combining for today if we were going to try it i think and just seeing that workshop doors there a bit raining nala is getting wet and doesn't like it sorry nala i'm drying here there we go nala's gone underneath so just going to look out the office door where the mower is and it's still going which it doesn't need to be you can just see now the rain so i'm going to call it back and push it charging point i'm still learning with this mower because i'm not quite sure whether it's got a rain sensor in it that it goes back to the station to charge and stops mowing in the rain because i like it if uh, if it's there somewhere but look at the rain now yep that's stopped combining or any chance of having to go on the barley's today just putting the trailers and machinery away in the shed got rained on and water in them when they're left outside Well, combines in the shed here. Yes, it's nice and sunny now, but you saw a minute ago in this video it wasn't. This hasn't been used since uh, two weeks nearly. I think it was two, tomorrow night it will be two weeks. So Thursday night it will be two weeks since it's been used when we finished the wheat harvest. But yeah, lovely weather now. But we just need a bit more fine weather. We might even have to wait till next week next week talks have been a lovely week tom's got caught up just about with solar and press work apart from headlands we can't do the outside a couple of breeds we've left them for hedge cutting we can't cut hedges until september the first so we've got contracts coming for then thought it'd be a good idea to weigh these two forklifts just to compare them and just see where they are so we'll get on this 10 meter i haven't driven it yet maybe have a proper go in it tomorrow up the road um but with it having the manual transmission, it is uh, it is a bit jumpy. Because it was a, a turn that radio off. <laughs> um, I was going to mention this. Uh, Ruben and Tom are great. The advantage of having two young guys on the farm are absolutely unbelievable. There's one disadvantage. Every tractor, every vehicle you get in, it's tuned to that and some of the row that comes out the speakers the vehicles i get in is absolutely unbelievable anyway i suppose we're all young ones anyway um yeah just pulling this on the way bridge and we'll just see what the what the weight is so there we are nine let's just turn this row off um 9420 kilograms which is 9.42 tons 9.4 that's with me on it I'm getting ours out of the shed now. We'll uh, we'll get on the get on the way bridge, and I've just had to mute this because look, Radio One yet again, the drivel that they put out on that station, <laughs> unreal. So, 9.4 tons was the other one. Oh, big difference! If you can see through this dirty window, 8.1. So we're 1.3 tonnes different on a forklift that will reach exactly the same. This so that's it for another midweek update. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed looking at various crops and the sugar beet. Good update on the sugar beet. Haven't done much with that for the last few weeks. We've been concentrating on the navy beans or the that will make baked beans. Incidentally, they're not quite ready for glyphosating off. We're looking at probably next week to do that. Anyway, that's it for now. Hope you enjoy this update and we'll see you on Sunday and thanks for watching.